So I made this gloomy fantasy environment in Blender. Uh, I didn't use any imported assets or textures, so the entire thing was done straight on the software. Uh, this video was originally meant to be a time lapse, like many of my other videos. However, the recording just completely vanished. So I'll take the opportunity to teach you guys the process and techniques I used to create this scene. And maybe in return, someone can teach me how to make a good looking thumbnail. Anyways, I'll break down the steps of how I achieved this. Uh, let's look into concepting, modeling, texturing, lighting, and rendering. And a little optional step of post-processing. So starting an artwork is always going to be the hardest step. Uh, immersing yourself in inspiration is always a great way to research potential ideas, ranging from concepts of scenery, color, palette, uh, lighting, camera angles, or even just overall scene composition. Great environment design also incorporates visual storytelling. How can you achieve a sense of story with just an image alone? Uh, this can be done really by having the viewer raise questions about the artwork. Why is this subject here? What is the surrounding? Ask yourself, how will you achieve this? For inspiration, I like to scroll through social media, especially Pinterest. I took interest in this image here because of its potential of visual storytelling. I wondered to myself how or why such a structure would be on such a tall column. I also wanted to add an atmospheric fog around it to create this sense of vastness and add to the overall ambiguity and mystery of the scene. All right, let's look at the modeling. Luckily, I do have some of the footage of me modeling the spire, so uh, yeah, here it is. I join multiple cubes together in a column-like shape and using the subdivision and remesh modifiers, I achieve this sort of unique rock structure effect. Then using the displace modifier, it made the entire object look rough and even more rocky. I use sculpting to deform the top of the spire to add some crumbling elevation. This will provide the foundation for the castle. I also decided to block out the castle so I could visualize the entire layout before refining anything. I stuck mostly to the reference for the castle, however I wanted to add more of a gothic style with these metal spikes along the rooftop. To create the windows, I added a cube and beveled the top side edges to create this arch. Then, used the array modifier to create copies. To cut the windows into the buildings, I added a boolean modifier onto one of the buildings and selected the window object. By placing the window onto the building and then applying the modifier, the window object cuts into the mesh of the building. Now for these little floating columns, I just got the main column, I shrunk it down and rotated them differently to create a difference. For these little floating rocks here, I created a collection of many mini rocks, which were also just the main column shrunken down. On the side of the scene, I added a plane with a particle emitter system, with the collection being rendered. Now I added an empty in the center of the screen and put it way up high in the air, still in line with the spire in the middle. Back in the particle system settings on the plane, go down to physics, void brain, and only have follow leader. A slot will come up here, so just select the empty that is at the top of the scene. Now if you play the animation, all the particles will emit and head straight towards the empty, and you can adjust the emission settings to your liking. Now we want these rocks to spiral upwards around the column rather than just head straight up. And this can be done by placing a vortex force field at the center of the spire, which will affect the particle's movement. You may have to adjust the strength and inflow of the force field, where in my case, I just had to slightly decrease the inflow into a negative value. Now for texturing. Uh, in my last video, I stressed that you should not be afraid to use existing photorealistic textures from texture libraries. Uh, in this scene specifically, I actually didn't use such textures, but instead created very simple ones of my own. Uh, I did this because I couldn't find a rock texture that suited well for such a large scale of an object, which caused an awkward repeating pattern. Since I planned for my scene to be dark and foggy, details of a photorealistic render may not be very visible in this case, so I opted to just create my own in the shader editor. I mixed a few noise texture nodes together with different colors and sizes to create some variation, 
and I also added a bump node to enhance the rocky texture. Alright, to prepare for lighting, I'm going to add a large cube over the entire scene. Now in shading, add a volume scatter node. So this will be our fog, and as you can see, there are a few different phases to choose from. For imitating fog, mist or clouds, set it to May. To add a unique god ray effect, add a large plane over the entire scene with a noise texture and color ramp plugged into the alpha. This creates invisible spots to the plane which will come in handy for the lighting setup. For the background, I wanted it to be quite dark so I added a noise texture and color ramp to add some dark variation. Alright, now we should have everything set up for lighting. Lighting could potentially be the most difficult step when designing a 3D scene that could either make or break the entire visual appeal. Uh, here is how I achieved this gloomy effect. I added a sunlight with a blue tinge to it and rotated it at a nice angle. Now this is where the fog and the plane above takes full effect. The sunlight will only go through the invisible parts of the plane, where when interacting with the fog it creates this beautiful god ray effect. I rotated my sun in a certain way to illuminate the castle to highlight and put emphasis on the main subject of the scene. The density of the fog, the noise texture and color ramp on the plane, and the rotation and strength of the sunlight will all significantly affect the mood, atmosphere, and overall visual appeal of the scene. So have a play around with the values and really just do what works for you. Rendering. Uh, there are many render settings in Blender that you can adjust to decrease render time. Just know that a decreased render time tends to lead to a low quality render. This isn't necessarily a bad thing as depending on the simplicity of your scene, some render settings simply don't have to be as high. I wanted to keep my render settings still fairly high so I could capture the details of the scene. Here are the settings that you should mainly focus on. It's recommended to switch CPU to GPU here because the GPU tends to handle rendering better. Now, the max samples is the maximum number of times the rendering engine will calculate light rays per pixel. In simple terms, the lower the value, the less clarified and potentially hazy the render may be. Volumetric lighting also has much better results with the higher values, so just keep that in note. You can keep the samples to the default 4096, however a value of 1024 or even 512 can suffice. The max bounces under light paths is the amount of times light will bounce between objects. In simple terms, the higher the value, the more realistic and overall better quality the lighting and atmosphere will be. I wanted to achieve very beautiful realistic lighting with the god ray effect, so I had my values at 8 in total and 5 in diffuse, glossy and transmission. To be totally honest, this was definitely overkill as high values are only necessary for renders that are compacted with detailed models and textures with multiple lighting sources. Uh, my render was fairly simple in this sense, so much lower values would work just as fine. Now under performance, it's also good to lower the tile size to 256, which breaks up the render into sections rather than stressing out your computer by trying to render the entire thing at once. An extra step you could do which isn't entirely necessary but does certainly improve the render is some post-processing. This can be done in a compositing tab or on other softwares such as Photoshop and Lightroom. On pretty much all of my renders, I always use a glare node to add a nice glow effect. And I also then take my render into Adobe Lightroom as it's simple to navigate and overall easy to use. Just a quick note, the contrast and exposure of an image greatly affects the cinematic atmosphere of the image. I also like to add vignettes and film grain to enhance the aesthetic. Many of the lighting and coloring values require a lot of meddling with to get a nice image that you're happy with. So with my post-processing, here is the before and the after. It's a slight change but a positive change for sure. And that's pretty much everything. Uh, I used fairly simple principles of scene composition, texturing and lighting, where once you practice them more, you can apply them to essentially any render you wish. It's certainly taken me quite the journey to experiment a lot with techniques like volumetric lighting and particle emitters, so really my only advice to you is practice. Find something you want to focus on and try it multiple times until it looks right. In many of my videos, it looks like I have this clear picture in my head which I achieve instantly, but the truth is there is so much footage I have to cut out because I spend way too much time playing around with the way something looks, only to then completely get rid of it and start over. Uh, don't expect instant results, because it really is just a journey of trial and error. 
and most importantly, what we learn from it. I hope this breakdown really has helped you out and given you further insight into achieving such simple yet appealing renders. Uh, feel free to ask questions or any other further comments.